Good afternoon. Here at New Zion, we tend to say good afternoon back. So let's try that again. Good afternoon. There we go. I'm so happy to see everyone here. My name is Brian Hers, and I'm the pastoral intern here at New Zion under the Dr. K. Edward Copeland. Yes, that deserves a round of applause. So we are gathered here today to celebrate the Lord's work of 21 years in ministry through Dr. K. Edward Copeland. We have a wide variety of guests here. We have people from all over the county, all over the city, all over the state and country even here. So if, uh, if you wouldn't mind, we uh, have been using Psalm 118 as kind of the, the guiding verse for this. And so if I could just read a bit from Psalm 118 before we have our first guests come. Psalm 118 says, verse 23 says, This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in us. Be glad in it. Save us, we pray, O Lord. O Lord, we pray, give us success. So we are rejoicing and celebrating in the work that the Lord has done through Pastor Copeland. So you're going to hear... Uh, we're going to have uh, people from the community. We're going to have different voices from different clergymen and um, different people from the education sector, all, all the different places that Pastor Copeland has been instrumental in working in with our community. So um, we will begin with a music selection. And so, oh, but before we start with that, can we introduce Pastor K. Edward Copeland? Now that our guest of honor is here, we can officially begin this party. Hello, how are everybody doing on this evening? All right, first off, I would like to say it's good to always come back home where it all started at. And this is a very special day, 21 years for Pastor Copeland and the First Lady. And they always give us our flowers over the pulpit, so we just want to say thank y'all for everything that y'all have poured into us. And... Let's get this party started like he said. Go ahead and vibe with us. Get up off your feet, move your seat, move, and let's praise the Lord.
that we will have uh, Deacon Gene Houston from the New Zion Baptist Church come up here and say something. My recollection of the embryonic beginnings of the call of Pastor Kenneth Edward Copeland to the New Zion Baptist Church began around the year 2000-2001 when I received a call from the chairman of deacons then the New Zion Baptist Church uh, asking for assistance in their ability to have uh, candidates to come uh, as persons to preach after the retirement of the notable and long revered leader, Reverend Dr. Clavin Salter, who served over 50 years there at the New Zion Church. He gave me the name of an individual and asked if I knew him, uh, given the fact he was from Kansas City. I told him the name sounded familiar, but I would call and see if I could vet and check him out. I then called uh, the late Reverend Dr. Wallace S. Hartsfield, uh, who was the state president uh, there in Missouri and also citywide council of pastors uh, president there in Kansas City, as well as a national leader, asked him about the individual. I did come to find out that this person was not credible at all. Uh, as a matter of fact, had some challenges with the law other things of that nature which highly concerned me. So I called back to the chairman and said to them, I would uh, bump your brakes on bringing that person uh, to preach uh, for you as a potential candidate for the New Zion Church. He said, well, we've already communicated uh, that someone will be coming this Sunday. Uh, I said, well, did you give a name? He said, no. He just said that he was on a layover uh, coming uh, through and that he would be glad to preach while he was in the area. I said, well, already you know that there's some fraudulent activity because nobody has a layover in Rockford going anywhere usually. Uh, and then secondly, he said he had a legal background as a lawyer, so let me make a call and I'll call you back. I then picked up the phone and I called my longtime friend uh, who was the son of uh, one of my mentors in ministry. Uh, and I called Pastor uh, then Kenneth Edward Copeland, who was at the Rock of Ages Church, who was uh, serving there incredibly with Pastor Marvin Wiley and uh, his father, uh, my friend, uh, would do revivals there at Pastor Wiley's church. And as a matter of fact, come in a month, uh, Pastor Copeland Sr. would have married my wife and I uh, for 40 years uh, together marriage. So I've known him, and my wife was even Pastor uh, Kenneth Edward Copeland's uh, Sunday school teacher when he was in high school. So anyway, I called him and asked if he could be available to come to preach for the New Zion Church on that Sunday morning. Uh, he then checked his schedule, called me back, and said that uh, he could make himself available to come and to preach for the New Zion Church on that Sunday. Uh, I called uh, and confirmed it with the chairman of deacons, and uh, the rest is history. Uh, all I can say to you is here we are 21 years later, and I am so pleased and proud to be able to say that uh, it takes a person of the character, integrity, and uh, the honesty to ministry as Pastor Kenneth Edward Copeland has exhibited all of his life, his parents who prayed that God would raise up godly friends for them and a destiny in the future that would make a difference in life and ministry. And uh, I say to each of you, that God always has the last word. So here we are celebrating 21 years later, the fact that my friend, my beloved brother, and man of God celebrates 21 years and counting as the senior pastor of the New Zion Baptist Church of Rockford, Illinois. Happy anniversary, my brother, for my family and mine to you. Keep looking up. Good evening, everyone. It's a great day we have it here. God is good. 
You know, uh, Reverend Blair called me a couple of nights, and he told me that he had a band could take us from where Reverend Salter left us to even higher heights. He told the truth. <clears throat> he, he also said that, now listen, he's not a pastor. He's not an ordained pastor. That wasn't a problem, but he said he'd been in churches all his life. He'd been teaching and doing things in the church all his life. And his mother came down, she told me the same thing. So he called me up one night and said he had a bed higher that's going to take us up even higher than where Reverend Salter left us. And he have done that. I thank God. I feel like he used me through Reverend Van to get him here. He was already on his way. He probably didn't even know it. But we sure thank God for him and his whole family. They are a beautiful family. Thank you. Thank you, Deacon Houston. Now we're going to have a video tribute following now. Pastor Copeland, Joshua Pegram here. Man, congratulations on 21 years of faithful ministry at New Zion Missionary Baptist Church. Grace and peace to Pastor Kenneth Edward Copeland and First Lady Starla Copeland. It is an honor, it is a joy just to have this opportunity just to say congratulations. Hey everyone, this is Jerry Meeks with the Chicago Course on Preaching. And I just wanna say to my friend, Pastor Copeland, congratulations on 21 years of ministry. Grace and peace, New Zion family. I wanted to take this moment just to express my sincere congratulatory appreciation for your pastor, my friend and dear brother, Dr. Kenneth Edward Copeland. It's an honor to have learned from you, to serve in community alongside you, and to see your faithfulness over many years. As I reflect on the impact that you've had on my life and ministry, a few things come to mind. Your hospitality, and how well you model that, Starla, uh, your congregation, just how kind and welcoming you were. Uh, Liz and I, my wife, have talked about that a number of times. Uh, we have had a long time, long standing relationship. Our sons have grown up together. As a matter of fact, I watched Pastor Copeland, I watched you grow up. I remember you guys first came here, and I appreciate so much that your mom and your dad, they took me under their wings and called me a son. It has been one of the great joys of my professional career to birth the Chicago Course on Preaching with you working alongside with me. We have created something truly remarkable. And I can say with all honesty that it wouldn't be possible without your collaboration. But I just want to say that he has been an exemplary example to this pastor. From the time that I met him many years ago through Michael Randall, even until our time uh, as co-workers in the Charles Simeon Trust, he has been a consistent and stable example of a godly man. I'm so thankful for you, uh, for the way that you've impacted my life personally, uh, the community of Rockford, uh, New Zion, uh, for other men I love and know who are in ministry and I'm learning from as well. Uh, congratulations. Grateful for you, and uh, well done. Keep up the great work. Rockford, don't may, they may not know, but you are truly, you and First Lady are God's people. And I know that God's hand rests upon you, and I know God is smiling on you and your church family. I just want to say best wishes to you, and I pray that God will continue to uh, strengthen you both as you walk this journey. May God keep you. May God bless you. To see you work with students and to gain from your many years in the ministry, and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing many more and working with you together in the future. So congratulations. Happy anniversary. May God continue to richly bless your ministry and the example that you have set to so many preachers like myself who have benefited from your faithfulness. God bless you, love you, look forward to seeing you real soon. Enjoy 
your anniversary. The thing that I love about that video is it shows that Pastor Copeland is truly a pastor of pastors. He's a pastor of this church first and foremost, but more than anything, he's a pastor of pastors. And that is not something that you can say about everyone. He cares for so many. He pours into them relentlessly. So next we have uh, Pastor Bland coming up to share a word. There's not many people I would fly out of a pulpit after preaching for and come across state lines and hopefully there are no state troopers <laughs> that will come. But if you see them, you don't know me. You have not seen me. But it would be, if anybody, for the honoree that we have today. I could think of no better person that deserves not only honor but double honor than this our dear brother. Pastor Kenneth Edward Copeland. Just in case I needed an excuse, I wanted them to know that I was kidnapped uh, and uh, would be considered a person who was being taken hostage as a uh, person who uh, I didn't know took me off the side of the road and took some young kid and was trying to hold hostage, so I was going to plead, I don't know this lady. But just in case I couldn't get away with that, there are too many people know that next month I would have been married to her 40 years, so I can't get away with that. So I'm just thankful to God. Amen. This time I got a chance to bring the retired, amen, Phyllis Bland with me that has come with me. Normally she uh, is preparing for teaching, so she always tells me, tell Ed, I said hi. But she got to tell him for herself. She was... Uh, Ed Copeland's Sunday school teacher when he was in high school. And that's just how far back we go with this family. I want you to know that this is a signature honor of mine, first of all, to just say that there's so many faces that I love that I see. And it's so good for me to look and see you and to share with you. And the others that I don't know, I'm looking to know you. And if you don't know that I'm part of this church, then you're a Latter-day Saint because I've been around a little while right now. They'll get that later, Ronnie. <laughs> when you look for criminals, you check for fingerprints. But when you look for giants, you check for footprints. In his former work, after leaving University of Illinois, and the Ed Copeland that I knew as a musician, choral director, music enthusiasts as we both were. I guess we thought we was going to be the next Richard Smallwood or whatever we were going to be. And uh, moving on into the legal realm, anyone with any common sense would knew God has always had his hand on Ed Copeland. As he was in the legal field checking for fingerprints, possibly for those who needed to be apprehended by the law. What he did not know was he was being apprehended by the Lord. One of the great assets to the kingdom was when he said yes and yielded to the work of ministry. I don't know that it will ever be told in the annals of life and history, literally the number of people that Pastor Kenneth Edward Copeland's ministry has touched and not just because of the words he has shared, because his life has sp spoken louder. Francis of Assisi said, wherever you go, preach a little and only use words if you have to. I'm grateful because I have been blessed by the legacy of Copeland's. As he looks and saw me walk in the door, I've been waiting to surprise a Copeland for a long time. His father would always say, you up to your old tricks. That's one of his famous statements, and you couldn't always fool him. But I'm grateful that I found a way that I could fool his son. <laughs> I want you to know when I received the call, I want to thank my friend, my buddy partner in crime, Starla, 
Amen. Who she's the one that could pull this off. Amen. I don't know how she did it, but she was able to keep it. I'm not sure of how much has been heard already before I came in. But I finally am grateful that God has a way of having the last word. I received a call somewhere around the year 2000, 2001. And that call came from the chairman of deacons uh, here at the church after one of the most revered stellar leaders of this community has known and probably will know a man by the name of Clavin Salter. A man deserving of honor. Had the privilege of speaking at his 50th anniversary in retirement and sharing and as the New Zion Church was in transition in the process of looking for its next leader. It's always good to know that success without successors is failure. And I knew God would not leave this ministry and this witness without great leadership. I believe it was Brother Houston that called me. When I got the call, this particular call said, we have somebody that's coming that's scheduled to preach at New Zion Church He's from Kansas City, said he's flying through, passing through town, and uh, would be convenient if be used for preaching for this Sunday, but we'd like for you to just know if you know him. Gave me the name, sounded some familiar, wasn't sure. I said, well, listen, let me check him out. I'll vet him for you. Called one of the greatest sages, Pastor Copeland's pastor, and Pastor Wallace S. Hartfield from Kansas City, who, where the gentleman hailed from, Forgive me for not calling names in case this is virtual. <laughs> but I called and asked him, and as soon as I called his name, he says, oh, God, I knew something was wrong then. But when Pastor Hartfield says, oh, Lord, oh, God, and he's not preaching, that means there's a problem. When he told me that there was a problem with this particular person being able to come, having had some discrepancies and a few challenges and bumps along the road, I said, okay, Dr. Hartsfield, thank you so much. I called back the deacon. I said, listen, I'm afraid to tell you that if I were you, I probably would not follow through. He said, well, I already got him scheduled for this Sunday. I said, did you give a name? He says, no. He just said that he had a legal background. He was a lawyer. I said, all right, well, two things I want you to know. Anybody who says that they just passing through on the flight to Rockford, you should have known something's problem. <laughs> I'm sorry, Brother Morrissey, but this is not a flight layover place to share. I said, that should have been a clue. I said, but beyond that, let me make another call. I believe I can help you. I put up the phone. I pick up the phone. At that time, there was a gentleman serving at the Rock of Ages Church, Reverend Wiley, the pastor whose mother just passed. And as we reached out and I reached him, I believe he had to call me back. And when he did, I just said to him, Ed, I need to know if I could get you to come and preach in Rockford. Just told him about the fact that the church needed to hear a preacher. Didn't tell him anything about much of this background. He hung up. He made sure that he checked in with his then uh, leader, Pastor Wiley. And it's always good to know that a person who's not hungry or eager uh, for leadership knows how to ride well in the second chariot. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You can't ride well in the first if you can't be loyal and serve and respectful. He wanted to make sure that his pastor was clear and that things were well. This is not his father. This is just one who he chose to serve under, but he had clearly the ethic to know to make that call. After he called and called back and said he could make it, I said to the then deacon, I said, you can fulfill your assignment because you got a real lawyer that's coming. There he is. <laughs> He's sitting right in front of me. I said, you got a real lawyer that's coming. And he'll fit the bill and he'll preach. And he wasn't coming at that point as a candidate, just coming to fill a faithful assignment. And I said to him, after I told him that he would come, I said, I probably won't need to have to make this call much longer because after you have heard him, you'll know what to do. I didn't hear any more about that, but the next thing I did hear was Reverend Ed Copeland was a finalist as a candidate for the church. And I didn't talk to people, I talked to the Lord. And I thanked him because I remembered his father saying many times, Lord, raise up godly friends for my children. Lord, pave the way for their future. I heard him 
cry out to the Lord, he and his mother both, that they would be covered and their future would be bright. And I know that it was God's hand that brought him to this place because some folk can't stay nowhere 21 days. But we're here because God has favored him 21 years and counting. Yet faithful. And some people honestly come to this place looking for somewhere else to go. They come here as a launching pad going somewhere else. But you can't be faithful and fickle at the same time. You can't be premium and regular at the same time. There are others who have followed me, so I'll just close by just saying that New Zion, you are blessed by knowing God has blessed you again. And this one you can keep beyond 50 if you know how to handle your business. But today, looking at this place and knowing God has moved with great vision and knowing that you already are what you're not already, God has favored us to be able to peek over and look and see that there is a man among us who is a giant in his own way. He finds criminals, but he turns them into Christians. God bless you. I love you. And may he keep you. Thank you, Pastor Bland. We're now going to have an, another musical presentation from the Huron family. And so, here we go. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Carlton Vines, and I am truly humbled to come here this evening so that we can all celebrate 21 years of service to our dear Pastor K. Edward Copeland. It's, you know, it's one thing for us as uh, members under his flock to hear about, well, to, to hear his teaching and, and the tutelage and, and to see him in the community, but it's going to be a whole other ball game to hear the, the first-hand accounts and the stories and just the testimonies and, and how he served the community. So I, I think I can speak for everyone from New Zion to say that, that we look forward to that and seeing how he's modeling what it is to be a man of God and, and just faithful to his community. So I'm here to announce the voices of clergy, and we are going to start with Bishop James Washington, presiding prelate, fifth juris jurisdiction of Illinois West. Thank you so much. Uh, it's just a, a joy to be here to celebrate uh, the anniversary of Reverend Copeland, uh, who I called up. Uh, when he came to Rockland, I called him, not that we were stale, but I called him a fresh breath of air that, that they came to our city. And we were glad to see him and to fellowship with him and to work, work with him on different projects. And uh, I just want to say to Pastor Copeland to keep doing what he's doing and never stop and look back. Amen. Because uh, God has higher heights and deeper depths for him to go. And I thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thank you. Amen. And up next, we are going to have from Hope Fellowship Church, Pastor Ronald Alexander. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. Uh, listen, I'm going to do what most Baptist preachers won't. I'm going to be short. But uh, I just wanted to say a few words. Um, there's a saying, and lately I heard that it's not true, but there's a saying, I don't know who it's attributed to, that you become the sum total of the five people you spend the most time with. Um, even though I've heard that that saying is not necessarily true, the sentiment is certainly true. You have to be careful of your surroundings because the people you surround yourself will, with will affect who you become. If that's true... It is the exact reason why I try my best to spend as much time with Edward Copeland as I possibly can. He is literally one of the smartest guys I know, and I know that I'm a better pastor and preacher simply because I glean from him. Um, it's coming to a point now, I think he figured it out, so he, he, we don't talk as much as we used to because I won't let him off the phone because I pick his brain for everything that I can. I will say this to you, 21 years is a long time to be with anybody. Let me say that one more time. <laughs> 21 years is a long time to stay in one place, to be consistent, confident, and competent. And he has more than proven that. Um, so I'll, I'll uh, close it out by saying this. My, my wife and I, um, don't judge us, we don't listen to just gospel music. We listen to other kind of music. Don't, don't, don't look at me like that. We listen to other types of music. And one of our favorite artists, don't judge me, one of our favorite artists is Anita Baker. Right? We like Anita Baker. <laughs> 
and I found out uh, that Anita Baker was doing a residency in Las Vegas. Technically, she had stopped doing concerts uh, a few years ago. And when I found out she was doing a residency, I said, man, I've got to get some tickets. I'm going to get us a room. We're going to go out. We're going to see Anita Baker. Got on the phone with my travel agent and said, let's work this out so that we can do this. I'll surprise my wife with the trip. She called me back and said, you're not going to believe this, but she's going to be there for three weeks, and it's already been sold out. It was sold out in two days. Okay, young folk don't get this. Let me see. <laughs> Anita Baker's last album came out in 2002. That's over 18 years ago. I think 2004, excuse me. So it was over 18 years ago. But her concert still sold out, not based on what she's doing now. It meant that enough people wanted to be in her presence, even though she has not had a song released in over 18 years, not based on what she's doing now, based on what she's done in the past. Some of y'all are still waiting on a check in the mail to give God glory, but I need you to understand he's already done enough. <laughs> that if Anita Baker can sell out an arena for three weeks over based on what she's done 18 years ago, how much more so do we owe God glory for what he's done for us? Uh, I wish I had three witnesses in here. And I'm only telling that story because I've, I've got to say this. Listen, friendship is a um, uh, misused word. Friendship and love are words I think we take out of context. I think that we use them too much and they've lost their effectiveness and reality. But I want you to know that I think of that man over there as my friend. And he's proven himself to be such. And because he's done that over and over and over again, if he doesn't do another thing, brother, I promise you, I'm your friend for the rest of your life. God bless you and happy anniversary. Thank you, Pastor Alexander. <clears throat> and up next, we are going to have one of our own sons from Jerusalem Missionary Baptist Church, Rodney Hayes. Thank you, Deacon Carlton. Good evening. Ah, uh, 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 I've been blessed to be under uh, only two two pastors, but there's been some great men in my life. Uh, my wife told me, "Don't cry." <laughs> doctor, Doctor. Uh, Dr. Salters, great man in my life. And I remember when he got sick, I went to the hospital. I said, well, what are we going to do? He said, God's got somebody coming. And he says, Rodney, he called me Nodney. He said, Nodney, I'm proud of you. I remember one time, my dad, he said, son, I'm proud of you. Another guy named Reverend Ivy in Beloit, my pastor, Pastor Copeland, allowed me to go and intern with him, and he said, I'm proud of you. But I'm, about a month and a half ago, Reverend Copeland called me. This is the same man that came 21 years ago and allowed me to go and sit in meetings for him. And I remember I went to one meeting and they was talking about him. And I said, oh, no, you ain't going to do that. <laughs> so I dialed his number. And I said, whatever you got to say, say it to him. Because you're not going to talk about my pastor behind my back. 
And I remember a time that he allowed me to sit in a meeting with him where this guy was talking about we ought to lower our standards for our children. So they can play football and basketball. Reverend Copeland looked over at me. And he looked back over at the guy. And you know Reverend Copeland is a wordsmith. He can make you look like dirt. And still love you. By just using words. And he simply asked the question. Would you do this to your children? It allowed me to learn from my pastor. But a month and a half ago, he called me and he said, Rodney, this is pastor. I said, yeah, pastor. He said, I'm proud of you and Tina. I have learned so much from you. Even how to be disciplined in love. <laughs> it's all right for your pastor to discipline you. I've learned so much from you. You encouraged me to go back to school. I went and got my bachelor's. You encouraged me to go back to school. I went and got my master's. You encouraged me to journal, so I wrote a book. All I can say is, I'm proud of you, man. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Thank you. <clears throat> Up next, we are going to have a musical selection from Jody Beach. Good evening, New Zion. It is good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. It is even better to be in the house of the Lord to give honor to one of his anointed. And it is very much an honor for my husband, Jim McDowell, and I to be a part of this grand celebration. And, you know, I'm not here with you on Sunday mornings. I'm not a member of this church. But I am a member of your Sunday school class on Facebook. Praise God. <laughs> And I can say that one of the blessings that has come out of these crazy two years that we have all survived, praise God, is uh, the, the spread of the gospel of Jesus Christ through the internet, all over. All the churches are online. And Pastor, you have been such a blessing to me. I've been watching your Sunday school class since the day that you started going online. And I need to share my favorite notes from Sunday school. This was from 2020 when the world was still crazy. And there was fear everywhere. And I'll never forget this message. In fact, after Sunday school, I typed these notes out and I carry them with me. And I quote this all the time. You were preaching on Psalm 34, one. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. The theme was that worship is a lifestyle. And I love this. It sounds so much cooler when you say it than when I say it, but you said, David, they, they, wanted David, they wanted David to take the, the weapons of the soldiers, but he was clumsy because he was a little boy. But he said, I got history with God, and I have practice with my weapons. And I loved that because you compared that to how we have practice with our prayer language when we pray to God. We have history with God. And, you know, I came out of that Sunday school class re-energized as you said, worship is a lifestyle. And my favorite quote was, if you can't worship in your own house, maybe you weren't really worshiping in the sanctuary. <laughs> Praise God. Thank you for those words. Well, we want to share a special song with you tonight. We didn't write this one. Ray Boltz wrote it a long time ago. But on behalf of my husband, Jim McDowell, and I, on behalf of my parents, Frank and Sonia Beach, and every single person in this room and this community that you have blessed, the name of this song is Thank You for Giving to the Lord.
I dreamed I went to heaven You were there with me We walked upon the streets of gold Beyond the crystal sea We heard the angels singing Someone called your name We turned and saw a young man And he was smiling as he came He said, friend you may not know me now and then he said but wait you used to teach my sunday school when i was only eight and every week you would say a prayer before the class would start and one day when you said that prayer i asked jesus in my heart giving to the Lord I am a life that was changed thank you for giving to the Lord I am so glad you gave another man stood before you he said, remember the time Missionary came to your church His pictures made you cry You didn't have much money But you gave it anyway Jesus took the gift you gave And that's why I'm here today giving to the Lord I am a life that was changed thank you for giving to the Lord I am so glad you gave one by one they came far as the eye could see each life somehow touched by your generosity little things that you had done sacrifices made unnoticed on the earth in heaven now proclaimed and I know up in heaven you're not supposed to cry but I am almost sure there were tears in your eyes as Jesus took your hand and you stood before the Lord he said my child look around for great is your reward thank you giving to the Lord I am a life that was changed thank you for giving to the Lord I am so glad you came to the Lord I am a life that was changed thank you for giving to the Lord Pastor Copeland I am so glad you
God bless you. Hello, everyone. I am Francisca French, and I am one of the three moderators tonight. And I actually don't know how that happened because Brian is the minister, Carlton is the deacon, and I'm the person who sits in the back every Sunday. So <laughs> I think it was Mrs. Copeland's way of getting me here on time. <laughs> but either way, I am honored to be here tonight to celebrate our pastor and his um, commitment to the community. And now we will have words by our city government and state representatives to show the expressions of our city's value of Pastor Copeland's commitment to the community. First up, we will have the Honorable Steve Thottleman, Senator of the Illinois 34th District. Good evening. Good evening. I'm so honored to be part of this huge celebration to recognize the professional and volunteer work of, of Pastor Copeland. Um, it's been, I can't believe it's been 21 years, first of all. That's absolutely um, amazing. Um, Pastor Copeland is one of those people that, uh, one of those community leaders I look up to and reach out to. Uh, when we deal with sometimes very difficult legislation in Springfield, some very difficult issues that we have to deal with. And, um, you know, I'll tell you one thing, he's never shy to let me know where he stands. <laughs> and I love his line that he's a recovering attorney. <laughs> Experience that firsthand. The Illinois Senate also wants to recognize uh, Pastor Copeland. I have a government proclamation uh, from the Senate and Unfortunately, government proclamations can be kind of wordy, but I, in this case, I think it's important to read it to showcase all the things that you've done and continue to do for this community. Whereas Pastor Copeland serves on several governing boards for community groups focusing on public education, access to health care and health food, legal services and criminal justice, he's provided spiritual leadership and guidance as a Rockford pastor for more than 20 years and also gives his time and expertise to local civic organizations and advocacy groups. Whereas Pastor Copeland continues to be a humble servant of the community through his involvement in numerous public events and outreach efforts for those who need help the most. And whereas a community activist, Pastor Copeland is active with the National Network of Safe Neighborhoods, so Lyman Rockford, the Gospel Coalition, Greater Rockford Chicago International Airport, and the Winnebago County Mental Health Board. It is proclaimed by the Senate of the 102nd General Assembly of the State of Illinois that we congratulate Pastor Copeland on his commitment and lifetime of work and wish him and his family our best in their future endeavors and be it further proclaimed that a suitable copy of this resolution be presented to Pastor Copeland as a symbol of our esteem and respect. Congratulations again. Looking forward to the next 21 years. And next, we will have the Honorable Maurice West II, representative for the Illinois 67th District. Thank you so much. Good evening, everyone. And if you don't mind me saying, praise the Lord, saints. I am not here to preach, y'all. <laughs> anyways, 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 praise the Lord, saints. I'm really excited to be here. If, even if I was not state representative, I would have been here. Because the Honorable Dr. K. Edward Copeland is a mentor of mine. I don't didn't, I didn't go to this church. I'll go to Westside. I'm a, a church of God in Christ. I'm an ordained minister in the churches of God in Christ. And I'm a politician. And y'all just gave me a microphone. But I, it's two callings that I take seriously, and I, and the Lord, I, when I first started into the political arena, God told me, they are running because they want to. You are running because I told you to. And so when I finally won a seat, I knew that I couldn't be that typical politician. 
the person that does things just for the sake of doing things or say things just for the sake of saying things. I told, I told everywhere I go, I say, Lord, help me to say what people need to hear, not what people want to hear. And one thing I learned from Dr. Copeland, because in this position, I, want, I don't want to lose myself. I don't want to bring a reproach to the Lord. And so every now and then I got to check myself. And there's a hot topic as of today. We don't have to talk about it. We can talk about it later. And I had to ask myself, Lord Jesus, did I mess up? But Copeland is standing with me. So I know I'm all right. And Pastor Copeland, I want to let you know there's three things that I've learned from you. One, that I learned today. One, you are a relationship builder because you have individuals here that don't have to be here. You have former mayors here who could have stayed home. You have former presidents of colleges that could have stayed home, but they're here to support you because you know how to build relationships. You are a moral compass. And again, there's times when I'm questioning myself and I know that the, when, if Copeland is standing by me or if Copeland is telling me that he's proud of me or keep on doing your thing, brother, then I know that I'm in the right position. And thank you for being a moral compass to our community. But also, the biggest thing is your spirit of excellence. I meet with many of people and there's not many times where I question myself after the meeting. Every time I leave Pastor Copeland, I tell myself, Reese, I'm Reese, by the way. You need to step your game up. <laughs> Every time. I met with him recently. I'm like, Reese, you got to step your game up. Not because I'm doing anything shysty, but because of your spirit of excellence, you, it, 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 it rubs off on other people. And it makes them want to be better. And for that, I thank you, sir. And so I got you this... Um, Certificate of recognition, and I'm honored to give it to you. I do this often every some places I go. No one, there's some people who do frame it, and other people who probably goes and throws it away. But I'm honored to give this to you, sir, because of the impact that you had not only in our community, but in our individual lives, but in my life. The work that we're working together on with Live Free Illinois and other things, uh, I know that I'm in the right place and I'm going down the right path when I see you there as well. He, his, he embodies the whole embodiment of Christianity. It's not just about your spiritual faith. It's about your physical well-being, your mental health, your financial health, your legal health, all that's happening on, under this roof. And we thank you, sir. And so in recognition of your ministry work inside and outside of the four walls of New Zion Missionary Baptist Church, thank you for being a moral compass for the Rockford region. And sir, thank you for being my mentor. Love you. Next, we will have Mr. Jaime, Jaime Salgado, who is the Winnebago County Board District 12, speaking for Mr. Joseph Chirelli, the chairman of the Winnebago County Board. Uh, first of all, uh, thank you for the invitation. Um, unfortunately, Mr. Shirelli couldn't be here for travel plans, but he did send a letter on uh, recognition. So I will go ahead and read that, and then I'll add a little bit towards the end. Uh, dear Pastor Copeland, on behalf of Winnebago County and the County Board, I'm writing to extend my appreciation for all the good work for our community. Um, your decades of advocacy, service, uh, for the better of education, access to health care, and neighborhood revitalization have been uh, made a notable difference in the lives of many of our residents. I additionally want to thank you for serving on the Mental Health Board. Your contributions on this board are invaluable in ensuring that the newly expanded services are available to everyone in our county that may need them. Although I cannot attend the community celebration held in your honor, Due to long-standing travel plans, I want to offer my sincere congratulations for all your work in making Winnebago County a better place uh, for everyone. Best wishes for many years of service. Um, I also want to, I don't know Copeland uh, very well. Um, I've 
been in meetings with them. I've seen him be part of, obviously, the airport uh, committee out there. Uh, he also serves on the mental health board. Um, so one of the things that, you know, kind of brings to shed my light, uh, I always see him. He's up in the podium when any anything's going in injustice or anything like that, you always see him in front of a podium, you know, addressing the controversies. And I do appreciate that about yourself. Not knowing you as a person and serving um, here at church or anything like that. So there is a quote uh, that I want to bring up from Dr. Martha Luther King. So I went to D.C. Uh, about two years ago, and obviously I went to the memorial out there. They have in stone grave quotes. And one of the quotes that says, the ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands in moments of comfort and convenience, but where he stands at times of challenge and controversy. So this is what I refer to, Dr. Copeland. Uh, I see you up there doing what you do every day, walking the walk, as we say, and so I do appreciate you serve a service to all of us, uh, an example of that, and I do appreciate that, and I want to give you congratulations on that and many more years to come. Thank you very much. Next, we have the Honorable Thomas McNamara, or T-Mac, the mayor of City of Rockford. What an honor uh, to be with all of you today to honor such an amazing man. I uh, want to first say you look at me and Pastor Copeland. I mean, I know you think there's so much in common. Immediately, by just our appearances, we're both incredibly muscular. I get it. But... There are three things that are really in common with uh, Pastor Copeland and myself. One, we care deeply about our community. But more importantly than that, second is we cherish our children. And third, I would argue even more important, don't tell Olympia and Malachi, we both married up, <laughs> big time. It's so wonderful to hear, I thought I was the only one who either called you or got those calls from you. Uh, and what I was writing down was, you are the ultimate truth teller. And I would reaffirm what Representative Maurice West said, you are truly that moral compass uh, for so many of us, but specifically our entire community. We appreciate you and we're better because of you. I will also say you don't always tell us what we want to hear. You tell us what we need to hear and often uh, may not always be easy, but it is also very appreciated. Pastor Copeland, I see really three sides uh, of you on a regular basis. One I mentioned previously is family. I don't often get to see you with your family, but I think one thing that you can see as you meet with individual after individual those who talk to you about the importance of their family and tell you about what's going on in their children's lives or their wife's lives just shows you how important family is to you. And you also even go beyond that. You ask us about our families so that you know that we're all individuals and it just means a lot. Second is community. And I think what Representative Maurice West said is accurate. There's people who will do things or say things you do and say those things, but you do them to have an impact and to change lives. If it's from reentry to education, you are there to change lives and make people's lives better. And then today, faith. You're obviously an amazing pastor. You can see that you're also a pastor to pastors, as was mentioned previously. But you have helped write the book on getting faith out into the community. You have helped write the book in Rockford and getting what's so wonderful that takes place in these four walls out into our city. And I just want to say a sincere thank you. And again, I'm so happy that you chose Rockford as your flyover. Lots of people do it, Reverend Bland. Lots of people do it. 
So it's my honor to provide you with a proclamation. Whereas, Pastor Copeland came to Rockford in 2001 with his amazing wife, Starla, and has three children to become the new pastor of New Zion Missionary Baptist Church. And whereas, Pastor Copeland is known to many as an exceptional leader of the church, but he's also an outstanding musician and composer, a brilliant author, a lecturer, and an attorney. Possibly his greatest talent is his ability to reach so many with his skillful teaching of the Bible. And whereas, Pastor Copeland is a graduate of the University of Illinois Champaign-Urbana, University of California at Berkeley, the Golden Gate Theological Seminary, and the Trinity Evangelical Divinity School. And whereas, Pastor Copeland serves his community just as passionately as his congregation. For the past two decades, he has given his time to serve on, on boards of several organizations that directly impact our residents in areas such as education, healthcare, and criminal justice. And whereas Pastor Copeland has proven to be an excellent communicator and mentor and a man who genuinely cares for the future of our community and all of our residents. Now, therefore, I, Thomas P. McNamara, as the mayor of the city of Rockford, do hereby proclaim October 16th, 2022, to be Pastor K. Edward Copeland Day. Next, we have Assistant Deputy Chief of Police, Mr. Michael Dahlke. Thank you. All right, first off, you're going to find that I'm not a politician. All right, <laughs> but it's going to be very difficult to follow uh, the gentleman that were preceding me, so I'm going to try to do my best. Uh, I know Pastor Copeland has done so much for our community, and that's all been mentioned over the last hour, and it's just amazing uh, to hear those those things but I'm going to talk specifically about some things that Pastor Copeland worked with the police department and some of the successes that we've had and fortunately enough I got to work directly with him over those years and I just wanted to talk a little bit about those things because I really think it's important for to mention that not only do we see Pastor Copeland on the uh, as him as a pastor but we see him as a community leader in education but also in criminal justice. And this is, uh, again, where I kind of come in with this. So I originally met Pastor Coppola in roughly 2013. And then during that time period, the Rockford Police Department was very, very uh, deep into reentry. And for those of you who may not know what reentry is, it's kind of just a general term that's bounced around law enforcement and whatnot. But really what that is, it's, it's, it's identifying individuals coming out of the penitentiary system, identifying those people who are high-risk people and bringing them in and providing them with some resources, an outlet, some help, a second chance. And we worked very closely at together. I was kind of in the back scenes more so. Uh, Reverend Coven was uh, always in the front as the moderator uh, to all these events. And I was always kind of in the back scene putting in, kind of putting everything together. But I was always astonished by being at those reentry meetings and then hearing Pastor Copeland speak to the individuals who just came out of prison and giving them hope, giving them the opportunity again for that second chance and working with that group was just, just amazing over the years. So uh, Reverend Copeland, thank you very much for, for being that leader over there. Uh, you inspired me. Uh, on so many levels to continue that work and uh, as work as hard as we did with that. Uh, one of the things that, that I, I don't know if you know, uh, it just came out recently, is uh, back, in the, back in 2013, 14, 15 time period, um, we brought in some research group and they studied the program. They wanted to see its effectiveness and see if it really worked. And one of the things I was contacted by was the Department of Justice, not only maybe a month ago. And the Department of Justice offers a website. It's called 
uh, crimesolutions.gov. I don't know if anyone's familiar with that. Uh, you may see that, but it's a source, it's a resource for other agencies nationwide, internationally, to look at if you have an issue in your city, right? Maybe you just don't have those answers at your fingertips and you want to go in and, hmm, well, how can I curb whatever it may be in my city? And so that's the main website where a lot of people go to. And sure enough, um, Rockford is on that website and as a program, our reentry program, our Raven program that we worked on so many years ago is a positive uh, on that website, meaning that if you really want to curb violent crime in your city, right, this is the program that you need to model after. And it's, it's, it's really, really um, just, uh, again, very joyous to know that we're on that list, we're in that website as someone to look forward to. And, and a lot of that has to come with uh, the hard work that Pastor Copeland did during those time periods and, and during those call-ins. So again, Pastor, thank you very much. I actually had a call from uh, a large agency in Canada. Just the other day, I did a, a webinar with them. And uh, they're actually reaching out to the Rockford Police Department wanting to know what we did to help reduce violent crime. So that uh, hard work, even those years ago, has continued. Uh, and it's uh, moving forward as always. Another thing I want to just touch on real quick is uh, one of the things uh, outside of reentry, and again, Pastor Kupal and I talked uh, many times on many different issues within the police department or even just what's nationally going on in the, uh, um, uh, with the police departments and, and, and criminal justice. And over the last couple of years, you know, it's, it's been difficult to uh, be in law enforcement. We take a lot of criticism. Um, we're not always, we don't always do everything the right way. Uh, I'll be the first to admit that. But one of the things that, that I respect so much with Pastor Copeland is, is he's one of those guys that's just not going to be out there yelling and pointing the finger at the police department, right? He's just not going to do that and then walk away. Pastor Copeland's going to come to the table with solutions, right? He's going to come. And he's going to sit down with a table with us. And Pastor Copeland has been there uh, and, uh, and made those suggestions because, you know, as, a, as an administrator with the police department, I'm, I've been here 26 years now and an assistant deputy chief for 10. And uh, we don't have all the answers. I can tell you that right now. We don't. And when we have someone from the community like Pastor Copeland who could come up and, and sit down with us, and have, a, have a, a, a just a great, pleasant conversation, and we learn from him. And I can tell you over the years, I was constantly learning from Pastor Copeland on, on the way we should do business. So, um, Pastor Copeland, congratulations. Uh, love you. I could always consider uh, you a friend. I know at any time I can call you and you'll give me your shirt off your back, uh, and I appreciate it uh, of all those, those the conversations that we've had over the years. So, thank you very much. <laughs> Next, I'm not sh we're not sure if he's here, but Mr. Robert Cheney, recruiter for the Rockford Fire Department. Here? No? Okay. And we actually have an addition to the program. We have the former mayor of Rockford and Pastor Copeland's friend, mayor, or can I still say mayor? <laughs> former mayor, Larry Morrissey. Thank you very much. It's an honor to be here, to be invited back. Pastor Copeland, Starla, your beautiful children, all the members of the clergy that are gathered here this evening, Mayor McNamara, civic leaders, members of Pastor Copeland's congregation, and other family members and friends. It is a great honor to be here tonight, and I'm also joined by my lovely wife, Stacy here to share a few remarks in celebration, appreciation, and acknowledgement of this most important milestone. I've known Pastor Copeland actually goes back, if you can recall, before I was elected. Pastor Copeland uh, joined a pretty large group of clergy members who I would uh, probably say were checking me out, uh, to put it bluntly, prior to me being elected in 2005. I was relatively unknown at the time, a young man 
with a vision, willing to take on the established order. I remember Pastor Copeland being tough at that meeting, but he was also fair with his questions. He was fair with his judgment. He seemed then, as he does today, focused on substance, willing to think critically, to think differently, and determined to do what was best for his community, no matter what the cost. As mayor, our relationship grew, oftentimes through many very serious shared challenges and pursuits. You've heard about a number of the initiatives that the city was involved with uh, back then. Um, I'll mention uh, just a few. Alignment Rockford was one of them. We don't feel or hear about it as much now, but back when I was in office and in the years preceding, it's um, to say that the relationship between the city and the Rockford and District 205 was rocky would be an understatement. Alignment Rockford came about in an effort to try to put aside personalities and move towards a process of aligning our community to the betterment of our children, to make it less about personalities and more about substance. Pastor Copeland, because of his commitment to the schools, was invited to be a founding member of that organization, as was I. In fact, Pastor Copeland would not only join the organization, he would later become a chairman of the organization. And in fact, his work within that organization led to him embracing a national role in support of the alignment movement across the country, demonstrating what can be done when organizations and individuals join together through collective impact, united by a shared goal and a structured commitment to achieve that goal. You'll note with Pastor Copeland, it goes far beyond hope, right? God has given him the strength, the intelligence. He's worked so hard to be able to understand how organizations and individuals are motivated and to use that to drive towards his goals. Pastor Copeland was also there for me, both professionally and personally, during the most difficult challenge I took on during my time in office, which was bringing necessary reforms to the Rockford Police Department and working to strengthen the relationships and build trust between our police department and our community through shared accountability shared engagement, compassion, and transparency. Our work brought us together, indeed, at the most difficult time following the death of Mark Anthony Barmore, August 24th, 2009. It was then when Pastor Copeland stepped up. He supported his community, but he also supported me. He supported our chief through a very difficult time he became part of a mediation process run by the Department of Justice. Through many meetings, literally years of action and activity, he supported the reforms that our police department brought forward, truly leading across the state of Illinois. And while those reforms were needed, they also brought about significant stress within our department and within the community. Personally, it was very challenge, challenging for me and my family. He stood by me, however, and stood by our chief. When we continued the forum process, even after an interaction between our officers and the NAACP president at the time, you remember that, Lloyd Johnston, led to the calls for our chief's termination and a long legal process. Ultimately, the successful outcome of that process demonstrated our shared commitment to the reform movement. Pastor Copeland's work to support criminal justice reform led him, in fact, to become a national leader, part of the national network of safe communities. His work bringing communities together here, his work in foc focused deterrence made Rockford an example, as was already mentioned, across the nation, inviting him to speak to other communities across the nation on strategies that would lead to lower crime by connecting law enforcement and the communities they're called to serve. Pastor Copeland continues that work today, supporting criminal justice reform and safer communities through the Illinois Network for Pretrial Justice, where he has been an outspoken leader statewide and locally, supporting facts over fear, driving critical changes even when they may not be popular. Pastor Copeland is committed to systemic reform to address the impact of systemic racism and oppression, both here and abroad. 
He's committed to the health, safety, and prosperity of all people, wherever they may be. The name Edward is composed of the elements ed, meaning wealth, fortune, prosperous, and word, meaning guardian, protector. Pastor Copeland is a living embodiment of his name. He's been a guardian, a protector of so many, but most importantly, God's greatest fortune, his people, all of us. There's so much more I could go into. Prisoner reform, prisoner reentry, affordable housing, economic development, supporting our hotel downtown when it was controversial, our airport sitting on the board. Pastor Copeland, um, so you and I oftentimes, you would use a phrase, and I'm so glad Pastor Bland is here because you would quote him saying, Rockford is not so much divided as we are disconnected. That was a phrase, Pastor Bland, you authored. And we would talk about Rockford as not so much divided but disconnected. The truth of the matter is now we live in not just a city but a nation that is, it seems, disconnected and oftentimes divided. The work continues to connect our community and so much of what Pastor Copeland has represented is the work to connect this community and he's been an example for communities across the nation. I apologize in advance, my wife and I will have to leave a little bit earlier. We have a grandmother watching our children this evening. But it was important, but my wife Stacy wanted to be here tonight she wanted to give her recognition to you, Pastor, and your family. The wife of a mayor, as Mayor McNamara knows, we both know, just like the wife of, of a pastor, knows that they will be um, called on to be part of the pastor's work, the mayor's work, right? Because the mayor, the pastor, you're out in the community serving. Many times when I would be out in the community at night, Stacy, my wife, would ask me, who's all going to be there, and she always knew when I said Pastor Copeland would be there that you would have my back. He is a guardian. He is a protector. He's not just a pastor for pastors. He's a pastor for mayors and other civic leaders. And with that, I just think right now, Pastor, I thank you for your work. I think now is a time not to despair but to be hopeful. And my hope in our community, my hope in our nation, rests in my spiritual leader, spiritual leaders like yourself, giving us a path forward to be hopeful. Now is not a time to despair. I think God wants us to be hopeful. And he's given us leaders like you to help us lead us through these dark times. Thank you so much on behalf of me and my wife, Stacy, and our family. May God bless you on your years to come. Thank you. Thank you all. Uh, next, next, we're going to turn to the education section. And so first, we're going to hear from Mr. Earl, Do Mr. Earl Dotson, Jr., Director of Communication. He's going to be speaking on behalf of Superintendent Aaron Jarrett from D School District Number 205. Thank you. Good evening. First, give an honor to God, uh, Pastor Copeland, other clergy, uh, you, my brothers and sisters, it's truly an honor to be here. Um, first of all, Pastor Copeland, um, congratulations. Congratulations, sir. Um, our work can be both rewarding and challenging. And uh, I can truly say that whenever I needed um, words of comfort, support, uh, Pastor Copeland was always there. His door was always open for a visit. Uh, he always accepted my phone calls, and uh, for that I say thank you, sir. Uh, not only does he lead, but he's also in the back sometimes, just pushing forward. So thank you for that, sir. Uh, unfortunately, the superintendent couldn't be here, um, but he did leave a letter, and uh, bear with me, because he, he wrote a little book here. He's educators with all these words. Uh, <laughs> On behalf of the Board of Education and the Rockford Public Schools, I am honored to celebrate the community work of Pastor K. Edward Copeland. During his tenure, 
as both a religious and community leader, Pastor Copeland has positively impacted countless lives with his advocacy for education, physical and mental health, legal service, nutrition, and criminal justice. As the superintendent of Rock Republic Schools, I can say with complete certain, certainty that Pastor Copeland has truly been essential to inspiring an entire generation of community leaders to work together to create improved community outcomes. There are many ways that Pastor Copeland has positively impacted educational outcomes. In fact, education is truly a passion in the entire Copeland family, with his wife and daughter both playing important roles in the RPS educational systems. The work of New Zion Church has contributed to tutoring, mentoring, and countless other supports to students in our community. Beyond the great work of Pastor Copeland, his family and his church working directly with students and families, he has also taken the additional steps to lead true system change as the founding president of the executive board of Alignment Rockford. Prior to the creation of Alignment Rockford, the relationship between RPS and the community was completely broken. The city, the business community, the faith community, and many other groups were disconnected from the needs of the district. Under Pastor Copeland's inspired leadership, culture change occurred. Alignment Rockford reset the tone and created a culture of service and collaboration by aligning resources to support the public schools. Pastor Copeland continues to expect excellence out of the district and all parties attempting to support students. However, he was righteously intolerant of the divisive culture that kept our community divided. On many occasions, I heard Pastor Copeland remind rooms full of community leaders that our problems can be solved if we address the root of our problem, our disconnection. E.M. Forrester proudly proclaimed in his novel, Howard's End, that we must only connect. In my 25 years of public education, I have never met a better, I have never met a better connector than Pastor Edward K. Copeland, K. Edward Copeland. When others look to divide, Pastor Copeland looks to connect. I am a better superintendent because I have had the blessing of working with Pastor Copeland. More importantly, I am a better man because I've had the privilege of knowing Pastor Copeland. It is my sincere privilege to honor his work and legacy today. Sincerely, Dr. Aaron Jarrett, Superintendent of Rockwell Public School. Thank you. We've heard so much about Align Rockford, and we're going to now welcome up Miss Emily Klonick, Klonicky, uh Executive Director of Alignment Rockford. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here tonight, and actually, thanks to everyone who did my job for me and said everything I need to say. Um, no, I'm so happy to be here and shine the light on the work that Pastor Copeland has done to elevate the youth in our community and support the students in Rockford. Look at the impact that one single person who is committed can make in their community. Imagine a community where every single student and every single person is able to reach their full potential and make this kind of an impact in their community. Pastor Copeland was one of the founders of Alignment Rockford and he is a leader who understands the vision of community. He understands collaboration and the power of drawing people together for our youth, bringing a sense of hope and a sense of purpose that is grounded in an optimistic vision of what our community can do for our students. We don't give up on kids, we keep on working at what matters, and we try to do better for our students making their experience better and opening the doors of opportunity for them so that every single one can reach their potential. Pastor Copeland had a great relationship with Alignment Nashville, which is where Alignment Rockford came from, and he did a lot of work to bring the vision that Rockford can look at what other communities are doing well and learn something and bring 
ideas to our community to help make a difference and affect change. Today, he remains a moral compass about our organization and helps us keep our eye on what we are supposed to be doing and where we are supposed to be working. He works hard to affect the landscape of education in this community and help our youth. And incidentally, he is also a wonderful, intelligent, magnetic person with a huge smile, big ideas, and a great vision. He's been a wonderful mentor to me as a new director of Alignment Rockford and a very important voice in our visioning and our strategy in the community. So thank you so much. It's my pleasure to be here to honor you tonight and to be a part of this wonderful anniversary. Thank you. Next, we're going to welcome Matt. Welcome up, Miss Denise Pearson, School District Number 205, Subdistrict A board member. I certainly honor the Lord on today and to my pastor and First Lady, Dr. Kenneth Edward Copeland. On behalf, and let me give honor to both our clergy and our civic leaders, on behalf of our PS205 a Board of Education, I want to thank Pastor Copeland for his commitment, the role model, the encouraging words, the prayers. And I remember the call. I received a, a, a several calls, rather. Um, a previous representative resigned, and the president called me, uh, being that I had history since 2016 to apply for the position and I declined, and I received another call, and a few other calls. And then I received a call, for many of you that don't know, uh, this wonderful man is also my pastor. And the, he said, daughter. And, and I love saying that part because he's the only pastor I've ever had that called me daughter. And being that my father is deceased every now and then, you want to hear that word. So I want to thank you, uh, Pastor, for being a role model in community service. My background is Pentecostal, and that is an, an, a story at a different time. <laughs> so being able to be under the leadership of Pastor Copeland have impacted me personally that have provoked me to be as concerned about my community and one of the reasons why I'm, I'm, I'm speaking on both because he is my pastor one of the reasons why I try to be that member um, that is conscious of my pastor and his wife and their family is when thousands of people want you to solve a problem right now it can be a bit much and I, I said my the first couple of weeks in, in serving as a school board member, I don't know how pastors do this. And the demand that comes. And I don't want to speak on the awesome man he is because when they moved to Rock, when he moved to Rockford, he moved a wife and children. And I want my first lady to know that I thank you for your dedication to education. To a Benny for your dedication to education and the role model that you have set and the standard you've set for education. As I take my seat, I visited Lewis Lemon, which is in my subdistrict, and our subdistrict is subdistrict A is the most concentrated behavioral challenges poverty according to statistics and it is not an easy task thank you lady bland as well since we're talking about education and i had an opportunity to visit her classroom now when i walked into lewis lemon i could hear the kids the students before i saw them i went to lady c's room mrs copeland and it was like stepping into a different time zone Children were seated, well-behaved, 
doing their work. I said, this is amazing. So our educators don't get enough credit for what they do. And making a difference, words and my vocabulary is not large enough to express my gratitude. I, I make it a habit to when I speak about my pastor, I speak about my first lady. And like Pastor Hayes, please don't talk about my first lady. Now, it's like in family, you may have disagreements, but what you cannot do is talk about my sister. So I want the entire Copeland family to know that I love you so very much and I appreciate all that you do. Thank you. Thank you. Now we're going to have a special music presentation titled Super Friends. Well, we are the super friends. And um, we are the super friends because that's what Pastor Copeland named us. And so we all hail from different churches and we're good friends and we come together and we sing together and we just are um, glad to be here. And we want to uh, thank Pastor Copeland for thinking enough of us all the time to have us come and celebrate with you. So we feel like we are definitely a part of the family. So, how many of y'all expecting a miracle? Anybody expect miracles? Anybody expecting blessings? Anybody expecting anything good to come your way? Well, if you are just going to give God praise for, for what he's getting ready to do. He hasn't done it yet. But go on and give him praise. Go on and clap your hands and, and be grateful for what's on the way. Amen. We're going to sing a song. It's called Expect the Great. And that is exactly what we have. We have expectation for what God is going to continually do in this ministry and even through Pastor Copeland and many of us in this community. Amen. I think we're ready.
So we are going to go to Mrs. Jaina Beecher. Beecher? Beecher. Okay. Hi. Let me get my glass. <laughs> I'm Jana Beckerer, and my, this is my husband, Dr. Jack Beckerer. <laughs> he has a condition called PPA. And it affects his ability to speak. So I have his remarks, and I'm going to share with you what he's written. Okay. I'm very pleased to share some of Pastor Copeland's contributions to Rock Valley College. I was president of Rock Valley college for 10 years and during that time pastor copeland was appointed to the college's board of trustees most people have to run for election to get on that board <laughs> he had already been an advocate for the college and for many students and faculty but now he had a chance to really shine. I think of Luke 12, verse 48. In Jesus' words, to whom much is given, you know, much is required. Yeah. Well, we've heard a lot of that tonight, right? When he joined the board in 2010, much good happened. Thanks in part to Pastor Copeland's vision, enthusiasm, and leadership. The college opened the Learning Opportunity Center in downtown Rockford. Think about this. For the first time, Students from the west side could attend college classes close to home. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For the first time, 
a black man, served on the college's guiding board. Uh -huh. Maybe it was divine timing. Now the students could aspire and dream. A well-educated, successful man who looked like a lot of them was helping to guide the college's policy. Now they could believe a college degree might be possible for them too. Not only that, but the Running Start program began while Pastor Copeland was our trustee. How, how many of you know what Running Start is? Yeah. Okay. Running Start lets academically achieving high school juniors and seniors start taking college classes at Rock Valley. For students who complete the program, they get their high school diploma and their associate's degree in the same week. Parents are thrilled. <laughs> Students' loans can be cut almost in half. Well, and students are ready for their junior year of college. Yeah. What a blessing. Pastor Copeland, you made a good college better. You made it more accessible. You swung the door wide open. And you promised these students and their families, you belong here. You are going places. You have so much to contribute. And you know, he still supports the college even though his role is unofficial. You never know where he might turn up. Okay. This summer, I ran across him at Starlight Theater when he and his daughter came to cheer on the cast for the amazing musical Dream Girls. I think we just heard from some Dream Girls up here. <laughs> Anyway, for me personally, Pastor Copeland continues to be my friend, teacher, and a strong advocate. This celebration is well-earned and well-deserved. Next, we're going to hear from Mr. Jason Holcomb, Director of Community Impact for Region 1 Planning Council and the Mental Health Board. Thank you. I've really gotten to know Pastor Copeland over the last couple of years with our work together on the Mental Health Board. And in watching him and getting to know him, I've kind of developed this theory and I'd like to test it out here tonight. I believe that God used a cheat code when he created Pastor Copeland. I don't know if any of you played video games growing up like I did. You could create your own player, right? But when you created your own player, you could adjust speed, you could adjust strength, you could adjust these different factors, but it always had to add up to 100. You, if, you, if you raised one up a little bit more, you had to raise something down. It always balanced out to 100. So all these players were kind of balanced. You know, they just had different things they were good at. I think Pastor Copeland got 125. He got an extra 25 points. 
So I'm going to tell you where I think those went. Uh, first of all, Pastor Copeland is one college degree away from a bingo. <laughs> but he doesn't ever really present himself or, uh, I should say, when I met him, he's not Dr. Copeland. He, he doesn't go around town telling everybody I'm Dr. Copeland, right? And and he he's very intentional about the way he positions himself as a pastor. And I think he is intentional about that because he understands that it's important to position himself as a leader of his congregation and a leader of his community rather than an expert, even though he is an expert in many things. And I think that is a true lesson in community leadership. And I appreciate having learned that from you. The other thing, and I share this with Jody Beach because I grew up a pastor's kid, and when COVID shutdown happened, all of a sudden there were all these different uh, pastors online and, and churches, and I would go on on Sunday, and I would hop around, and I'd watch different teaching styles and preaching styles, and I would get lost in Sunday school with Pastor Copeland because I would just be mesmerized. I mean, I got a lot from the lessons, but the way that he would string words together I could just get lost and watch it, keep watching it, going back every week. And then his, his uh, Sunday school lessons on mental health were so refreshing. But in my experience of people that are really good at talking, they like to talk a lot, and they're not particularly good at doing anything else. <laughs> but I've heard the whole night, testimony after testimony, project after project, that has been implemented in our community because of Pastor Copeland. So again, he got 10 extra points there that just wasn't fair. <laughs> and so I think that God, having wrapping up his work, having recognized that he had broken the game, he said, you know what? I'm just going to give this man a sense of style at this point. Here's five extra points. I've already gone over my allotment. Pastor Copeland, it may not be fair, but I am very blessed to have a super player like you on my team and the team of the Mental Health Board. Thank you. Up next, we're going to have Professor Ali Watts Davis from the University of Illinois at Champaign-Urbana. Reverend Dr. K. Edward Copeland. We began our journey at Illinois and with the Black Chorus at the same time. He entered as a freshman and I as a graduate student. And for the past 40 years, Reverend Dr. K. Edward Copeland and I have continued our journey as family. He is an integral part of the history of Black Chorus having served along with Todd Taylor as my first pianist and organist, writing songs for the Black Chorus at my request as an undergraduate student, returning to campus while in law school at UC Berkeley to play for Mom's Day concerts, and serving on the faculty for all 15 Black Sacred Music Symposium conferences. His contribution to Black Sacred Music traditions is unparalleled. His commitment to the work of Black Chorus is unequaled. Dr. Copeland has an extensive catalog of compositions, many written and performed by Black Chorus. Just a very quick survey lists the number above 25. Our first CD, Have Thine Own Way, Lord, includes five of his compositions. Dr. Phoebe Lanier's CD, Consecrated, includes five of his compositions, and he has presented new music at every symposium. And he answered the request for a cantata for the 10th anniversary observance of 9-11 with refuge. A faithful husband, a loving father, and supportive friend, Symposium 15 delegates, help me in honoring my brother, Reverend Dr. K. Edward Copeland. Good evening, family. I am so delighted to be here, and I thought just to be on the safe side, I would prepare a presentation because I'm so full from what everyone has said 
And I could just say, ditto, but since I prepared something, I think I'm gonna say that as well. The Reverend Dr. K. Edward Copeland is an answer from the Father to a prayer that Reverend Dr. Harold Davis and I prayed over four decades ago. We prayed for good help, a good friend, a good brother. In short, we prayed for good help. You see, when God arrests you and you recognize and surrender to his call on your life, you will pray the Lord of the harvest to sustain you and send forth laborers for the ministry. Our pastor Copeland is an answer to prayer in innumerable ways. God did exceeding abundantly above all that we asked. God gave great help, a great friend, a great brother, a great uncle to our four children, and a great, great uncle to our three grandchildren. I've known Pastor Copeland all of his adult life. Yes, I met him when I was five, you know. No. <laughs> what a rich, rewarding relationship I've enjoyed. And right now, I'm having a full circle moment. You see, he was my student at Illinois, my musician, my composer. Now he's my elder brother, my attorney, my favorite Sunday school teacher, my counselor, and my pastor. Congratulations, Pastor Reverend Dr. Kenned, as I like to call him, Copeland. Congratulations, Lady Starla, soon to be Dr. Starla Copeland. <laughs> Amen. On the occasion of your 21st anniversary, and so on behalf of the Black Chorus from the land-grant institution of the 21st state, that would be Illinois, <laughs> the University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign, the blessing of the Lord be upon you. I bless you in the name of the Lord. And for me, no presentation would be complete without experiencing. I could talk about his music. I could talk about how he has taught us that the sacred music tradition is shelter. and Not only shelter, but a shield. It's armor for our trauma. Not only a shield, it's a soundtrack. Not only a soundtrack, it's a system. I could talk about it, but I want you to hear it. Compositions by the Reverend Doctor, Pastor K. Edward Copeland. Him as composer, as accompanist, and as conductor. Enjoy.
much more I could share, but I hope you got a taste of the music of our pastor, K. Edward Copeland. Up next, Mr. Craig Carlson from Senior Commercial Loan the Senior Commercial Loan Officer at Northwestern Bank. Thank you very much. It is truly a great honor, privilege, and inspiring to be here today to celebrate with Pastor Copeland. Um, I am a banker, but I'm a banker who's Christian, and that gave me the opportunity to meet Pastor Copeland 15 years ago. Pastor Copeland had uh, sent a letter to a number of banks in Rockford, and my boss knew that uh, the church was very important. He said, would you go speak with uh, Pastor Copeland and see what, uh, what we can do for, for him and, and New Zion? And uh, that conversation was the first of many between K. 
Pastor Copeland and me. He uh, asked me questions about um, the uh, Community Reinvestment Act and other things that were very, very important to him. And uh, we had a great dialogue. And I am very thankful and grateful that through that conversation, we've had that relationship from a banking perspective. But it's been so much more than that. Um, I hear lots of praise for him that is so warranted, and I call Pastor Copeland a kind friend who is, makes everyone feel comfortable. And that's a gift. He's got many gifts. We've
Now, I may have went out of turn, but wasn't that right on time? And he is an on-time God, isn't he? And we still stand. Here at um, New Zion, we have a um, mental health ministry called All of Me with a, a team of individuals who are passionate about it. So uh, speaking on behalf of that would be Mr. Kevin Thomas. Good evening, everyone, to the clergy and uh, our public officials. Um, God has a sense of humor, don't he? I was sitting back there thinking, and I had some notes in my phone, because I am a little young, but I uh, had some notes in my phone, and I said, how God strategically place you places. And I was sitting here thinking about all these people in here strategically placed exactly where we are. And the reason I say that, because four years ago, I made a commitment to myself and God that when it came to mental health, that I would do everything in my power to be the conduit for mental health. At that moment, I told him all I wanted to do was be a servant. Whatever it was when it came to mental health, I wanted to be a servant. We fast forward three years, the beginning of this year, and my wife and my daughter and I went to Panera Bread. She calls me bougie because I like Panera Bread. <laughs> and um, I seen a young fella look, sitting over at his computer, kind of looked like me, had a beard, had a bald head. And I paced the floor, and I told my wife, I said, I'm going to go over there and say something to him. Not knowing what God was doing in that moment. I built up the courage to go over there, and I introduced myself. And I said, I'm a psychotherapist. And he said, you are? He, and I said, yes. He said, man, I've been looking for you. <laughs> and I thought to myself, me? You looking for me? And if anybody know anything about Reverend Copeland, I knew Reverend Copeland before he knew me. Because he's such a giant in this community, as Reverend Bland says. And if you ever heard him preach, I don't know who can put words together like that. <laughs> and I love words, but like that? But anyway, we, we struck up a conversation. He said, okay, let me get your number, and we're going to do something. Because I got something at my church that I'm doing called All of Me. And I said, okay. So I put my number in his phone, and months went by, and he never called. So I said, I guess he don't want to, you know, do anything for mental health. <laughs> and so I called the church. I said, let me call the church and see what's going on. So I called the church and left a message. And he called me back. And ever since then, he and I have been joined at the hip. Everything that we talk about mental health, we, we sit and we discuss it. And one thing I love about him is he's humble. For someone to be so, uh, such a renaissance man, he sat and listened to little old me. He gave me an opportunity. He listened to me. And he said, I think we can do that. He supported me from, from day one. And I even teach his Sunday school and Bible class. Now, <laughs> and one thing he told me in, in conversation we have often, he talks about balance. And he talks about being that person to pour into others. More specifically, into young men. He said, I want the next 10 years to be poured into young men. I want to get a group of young men together and share. That's, that's what a renaissance man is, is to share that knowledge that he has and just give it away freely. 
That's why I say God strategically puts you in places and around people that will get you to where you need to be and get his message out. And I thank God for putting me in his path to be able to share mental health on a level that I never thought I would be able to do. And I've been in this field for 14 years, and it's been 20, he's been here in 21 years, and we never crossed paths. The timing is right. The timing is right. And Pastor, I would like to thank you for pouring into me, trusting me, sowing into me, and allowing me to use your platform when you're not here. And I thank you for that. Thank you. And up next, on behalf of New Zion's legal clinic, Ms. Anquinette Parham. Good evening. Giving honor to God who is the head of my life and I give honor to all of the clergy that are here today. I'm truly grateful to be here to honor uh, Pastor Copeland. Um, I am representing the New Zion Legal Clinic, but first I want to tell a very short story about um, just kind of how that came to be. Uh, Pastor Copeland um, has served as wise counsel and supporter and a resource to another organization that I'm on the board of directors for here in the community called the Wabongo Leadership Council. And we seek to uh, really engage our community and build leadership capacity within the African American community through education, health and wellness, and community and economic development. Well, Pastor Copeland has been a mentor to our organization as a whole and our members as individuals. He has always been just a huge support, um, giving us space to meet, hold events, just, just really being there for us. And he has proven to truly embody the best of what it is that he calls on others to be and to give here in this community. He is truly committed to being the change that he desires to see in the world. So long before the New Zion Legal Clinic was actually a reality, he was already a bold, vocal champion for justice. And not just when it's politically convenient, uh, but constantly, because he believed that justice is a biblical mandate, which it is. So for this reason, it was very easy uh, for me to give him a yes and commit myself to what he was trying to build in bringing a gospel justice clinic here to Rockford, uh, here at New Zion. One of the things that um, he had actually written about um, the concept of what it looks like to bring about justice in your community many years before, and so I'm gonna quote an article that he wrote uh, back in, I believe, 2015. He said, many Christians will travel across time zones international borders, and vast oceans to serve others, but never go to the next zip code, across the tracks, or beyond the bridge. This effort doesn't need to be an evangelistic outreach. It can be as simple as listening to fellow believers who don't get their news from your favorite channel or who disagree with your politics. As you listen to the narrative of the other near you, you'll discover that some people in your community might as well live on a different planet in terms of how they're experiencing your city or town. In his development and the birth of the New Zion Legal Clinic, it has really been a beautiful opportunity for attorneys as believers to be the hands and feet of Jesus the Christ. And although Pastor is a recovering attorney, he remains familiar with the fact that as legal practitioners, we often encounter people at the most vulnerable times in their lives. At the intersection of trauma, of adversity, of poverty, and immense fear of the unknown. It is at this intersection that the attorneys and volunteers of the Gospel Justice Clinic here at New Zion help people we meet people at that intersection. We help them understand the legal process, 
plan their next steps toward resolution, and remind them that the hope of the gospel is there, shining a light during their darkest of moments. This is the much needed resource that Pastor Copeland, this wonderful visionary, has brought to this community. So this evening, I want to thank you for your obedience and your submission to the call of God on your life, not only to serve the church, but to effectively serve the marketplace and many mountains of influence. Thank you to your amazing wife and your children for supporting you and sharing you with this community. Thank you for graciously allowing him to pour into all of us, Copeland family. Pastor Copeland, thank you for your embodiment of and your commitment to living out Micah 6 and 8. Know, O oh people, the Lord has told you what is good, and this is what he requires of you, to do what is right, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. Thank you, and God bless you, Pastor Colton. Up next, we have a video. join with a multitude of God's people on this occasion to give honor to whom honor is due, the Reverend Dr. Ed Copeland. It was my privilege years ago first to meet Dr. Copeland while we were speaking together at a conference, and he was teaching his remarkable and unique book, Writing in the Second Chair. In hearing him present not only that, but his own biblical exposition, challenge to pastors. I quickly recognized Dr. Copeland is a pastor of pastors. You know as well as I do that as a pastor, a confidant and counselor to other pastors, as a proclaimer, as a staunch advocate for social justice and righteousness, Dr. Ed Copeland has made an impact not only but far beyond that and all over this country. With his unique commendation of a law degree and a minister, he has been given more platforms than many of us would ever enjoy. He can speak with authority across disciplines to the church but also outside the church to the larger needs of our society for justice and for equity. It was my privilege to be hosted by him for one of the Proclaimers Place seminars that uh, I do for preachers. And in that, I saw the mentoring influence that Dr. Ed Copeland has with other pastors, how they've turned to him for guidance, for wisdom, and for insight. The Word of God tells us to give honor to whom honor is due. It's not a tip that we leave, it's a debt we owe. And for those who have labored worthily, they are worthy of double honor. Certainly on this occasion, it's my honor to join together with so many of you who are here to honor Reverend Dr. Ed Copeland. Dr. Copeland, friend Ed I count it as one of life's treasures to be your friend, brother, and colleague in ministry. May this celebration be to you a mighty encouragement, and in the years to come, may the memory of it grace you for yet still more to come. Thank you, friend. I hope you all are having a good time. I am enjoying everything as we celebrate our pastor. So Pastor Coven, would you please come up and share any remarks?
Thank you. You may be seated. Wyland, come up with me because I believe you're going to give the benediction after I make these final comments. To say thank you seems so insignificant compared to the joy that I feel in my heart. My parents didn't think they could have children, and so they prayed for a minute.